uh, before I start my sermon, I want to talk to you about something I call the trade-off. And, and we can all relate to it once I get into it. And the trade-off is uh, who I was before Christ and who I am with Christ. And so for, for a lot of us in the room, we all come from different backgrounds, different places. Uh, there's a lot of people in the room that are recovering from addiction, that's covering, recovering from uh, gambling addictions. That's, uh, we, have, uh, we have food issues in the room. We have people that have walked with Christ uh, most of their life and don't, don't come from addictions in those backgrounds. But Jesus and the Father has given us the biggest gift that we could offer, and that's sending Jesus to the cross and giving us forgiveness so we can be forgiven of our sins. So, so no matter if you come from addiction or if you come from dysfunction, if you come from abuse, or if you've been a Christian most of your life growing up into a Christian home and being a Christian, you still need Jesus' forgiveness. You still need what he done on the cross for you. So I think about that often because where I come from, most of you know that it was dysfunction, it was addiction, it was abuse, it was all the, 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 the darkness. And without Jesus, I have no business being up here with the mic in my hand. But with Jesus, I have the right to be called a pastor, a son of God, and be up here to spread the word. Amen? That's good news. All right, so we're just going to dive right into this, okay? We're going to look at Matthew 5, 42. I'm going to try not to be a slave to my notes. Someone told me that, so... I can't see that back there, so I'm going to turn around. <laughs> Sorry. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. And so if we think about that, the first thing that comes to most people's mind is it's money. Yeah. Give to any man who asks. Well, here they go. They're going to, they're going to take another, another offering. They want my money. <laughs> and so uh, if, you look at, if you look at the homeless that hold signs that says... Uh, Hungry. I would say, I would say there's a bigger picture to this scripture than what it says to give to any man to ask. That if you looked uh, deeper into it, like the homeless person holding the sign, he's not just hungry; he's starving. And there's some hungry people in this room tonight. So we're gonna we're gonna go on to another scripture. We're gonna come back to this. So let's look at uh, Galatians five twenty two. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And so gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. So I would tell you that the homeless person that says he's hungry, he's starving for spiritual gifts. He's starving for someone to come along and give him some kindness. He really needs some goodness in his life. He needs some gentleness and some peace in his life. And I would tell you here tonight, that's what you need in your life as well. No matter if you come from the addiction side of this or if you've been in the church all your life. And so uh, we, we really think sometimes when we say, give to any man that asks, well, th that's impossible. I, that's impossible for me to give to everybody that asks. Well, when you go to the Galatians and you realize it's not about money, it's about a bigger picture, it's about a bigger thing, then how much kindness can you give? How much self-control can you give to yourself? How much gentleness and peace can you give? Because So it says, freely you have received, freely give. So we come to church and you should be getting filled up. You should be getting filled up with these things, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, as well as other things. And then when you get full, if you're not going out and giving it away, what good is it if you're just full all the time, but if you're not giving it away? You're keeping it for yourself, and the words of God, the fruits of the Spirit, the gospel, is not for you to keep for yourself. It's to give away. It's to freely give and to freely give away. Giving and taking. So if we go back to uh, give to any man who asks, when we're receiving from God out of Galatians the fruits of the Spirit, he lavishes on us as much as we can handle. He lavishes it on us as much as we can take. And then we are called to go out and give it. 
There's some people in this room need some kindness, gentleness, some peace. I need those in my life. And so uh, we're going to look at another scripture. Um, let's look at Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. Okay, so uh, the wide road and the narrow road. How will you know what road you're on? How will you know if you're on the narrow road or the wide road? Well, the proof is if you're going this way, and this is the narrow road, you're going to have kindness goodness, peace, love, forgiveness, self-control. You're going to have all these things in your life. But if you're going this way, and this way is the wide road, you're going to have addiction. You're going to have self-hatred, hatred towards others. You're going to have things in your life that aren't good, the walking in the darkness, the sneaking, the lying, all these things that you'll have. And you'll know by the fruit that you walk in what others can see. Are you getting full of the Spirit? Are you getting full of the fruits of the Spirit and then going and giving them out? Because like Steve says in class so many times, and it's really simple. If you go this way, that's the narrow road. So you're going to have to do the things you have to do to be on the narrow road. If you go this way, it's the wide road. Now, Steve don't say it that way. I see him. If you go this way, you're going to end up over there. If you go this way, you're going to end up over there. Well, what is over there? Over there is the wide road. Over here is the narrow road. So what road are you going to travel on? And a lot of times in the church, a lot of times in the church, we try to, try to travel both roads at the same time. We try to travel the, both roads at the same time. So let's go down to Luke 9.35. Then a voice came out of the cloud. Now, if a voice comes out of the cloud, I have not heard that yet. <laughs> and I don't know if you have either, but if a voice comes down out of the cloud, I'm going to be like, uh, what is going on, right? <laughs> then a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. <laughs> so are we listening to Jesus? And if we're listening to Jesus, are we reading what he says and then living by what he says that we have to live by? He says some hard stuff, like give to any man who asks. This is uh, John 14, starting at 5. It's not on the thing. Maybe he'll pull it up real quick. John 14, verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? (laughs) Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's good there. So Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. So if you're looking for life and if you're looking for uh, the way, If you're confused and don't know the way, it's Jesus. Jesus is the way. And once you accept Jesus into your heart and you begin to start serving him and going further up and further in, the upper call of God in Jesus Christ, thank you, Steve, then you'll find out that you can do these things that was impossible for you to do before. Impossible for you to do before. Let's look at Luke 9, 23. I got a lot of scriptures tonight. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So if we have to deny ourselves, what do we have to deny ourselves from? If we have to pick up our cross and follow him, Uh, There are no crosses out there when you leave tonight. There's no crosses for you to pick up and put on your back. But I'm telling you, the cross and the the burden that we have to carry is our brother's burden. The guy that's holding the sign saying hungry. 
the person at the supermarket that's just being rude to you or rude to someone else, can you give them a little goodness, a little gentleness, a little kindness? How about your neighbor? How about your coworker? How about wherever you go, are you carrying Jesus and are you carrying the fruits of the Spirit with you? No? Very truly, I tell you, this is, this is uh, John 14, 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And um, so he's calling us to do the works that he has called us to do, the works that he has done. And uh, sometimes we're just like, I'm too tired to do this. I don't want to do this. It's too embarrassing to do this, to get out of my comfort zone and go and talk to someone that's really uh, having a rough time, that's really down on their luck, that's really uh, just really just lost. And they need what we have. The world needs what we have, and, and a lot of times we're trying to keep it to ourselves instead of trying to give it away because we're full. We're full. We're pregnant with the word, if you will. Let's go and give it away. Let's go and serve others. Let's go and lay down our life for others. Let's go and do to others that, that was done for us. Going, going back to who I was. A lot of you in here know my testimony, know who I was. I was no one to be trusted. I was no one to be followed. I was no one to give a microphone and let me speak to a crowd. <laughs> Steve says right. He agrees with And I'm telling you, that's the truth. I was a liar. I was a thief. I was broken. And I've come to, come to know Jesus. I met Jesus. I went to the Oroville Rescue Mission before I came here. And the second night that I was there, I got introduced to Jesus. And I would like to tell you it all worked out fine after that. And it did, but I, I was still in a season of relapsing and using. So how are we doing tonight? John 13, 34. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And the Father has sent his son, Jesus, God in the flesh, Jesus to earth, and went through so much. He showed the perfect love of the Father. He showed... Uh, that he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for you and for me. That was the standard that he set. He sent his son. I have a son. I don't know if I could send him to a cross. And so we are called to love as he has loved us. And the standard is his son was beaten, bruised, hair pulled out, spat on, crucified. And sometimes we're ashamed. Sometimes we won't get out of our car. We don't have time to stop and just say, hey, how are you doing today? You know, this church does a lot, a lot of outreach. We go to the, we go to the Orville Rescue Mission four times a month. If you're interested in going and spreading some, you know, my, <laughs> if you're interested in going and spreading some gospel, if you're interested in going and doing the things that Jesus called you to do, and you're shy or you're looking for a place to just get in where you're just jumping out there on your own, it's not just a shout out for the mission. It's a shout out to say, hey, come along with me. Come along with my team. We'll show you how. We'll teach you. We'll show you. Back to the trade-off. The trade-off is so good. I can't understand why, if you can explain to someone what you have, the life that you have, the dysfunction, the addiction. I know I keep talking about this, but this, this, this is what it is. The dysfunction, the darkness, the hatred, self-hate, hating everyone else. And you get to trade that off for a, a life that's... You have purpose in life. Wow. You have fullness in life. You have a way to show others how to get out of their, 
darkness, how to walk out of their stuff, that he uses me. He chose me. He called me. Has he called you? Has he chosen you? I would say yes. That he's calling all of us. There's a calling on all of our life, but will we step into that, what he has for us? So I just ask you tonight, where's your heart at? Is your heart hardened towards uh, people uh, that live on the streets? Or your, is your heart hardened towards uh, people with addictions? There's a lot of people in this room fighting addiction, fighting to stay out of addiction. I'm one of them. I used to be bound by addiction. I used to be bound, down, bound by shame, by self-hate. Look, I hated myself so bad when I got here. You don't know. There was no way for me to ever forgive myself for the things that I had done and for the things that had been done to me until I partnered with Jesus, until I partnered with the Father. Now, he's, he makes things, uh, he makes the impossible possible. Like we can give to anyone who asks. Freely you have received, so freely you can give. So I want to I want to call you into an uh, 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 altar call tonight where you can get your heart right. Okay, a lot of our hearts is, is right in here, but there's more. There's there's more with God. No matter where you're at, from the very babyest Christian. All the way to the senior pastor, there's more. It's further up and further in with Jesus. When you're calling on him, when you're relying on him, there is so much more. So I ask you tonight, would you do some business with the Lord tonight? Would you be willing to step forward one step, two steps, maybe come to the altar? Bow a knee, open your heart, ask him, would he... Would he give you what he was fill you up with the things that I'm talking about the fruits of the spirit there's always more so the the peace that I had five months ago six months ago it's not the peace that I have today it's grown it grows it's more it's further up and farther in at the upper call of Jesus Christ we just keep going we just keep going we just keep going because see we're in a race we're in a race here. And we're not finished until we take our last breath. And when we take our last breath, it's done. But while we're here, there is more. There is so much more. So I want to ask you to start coming forward. Take a step forward. If it's, if it's just from getting up out of your chair, standing up, stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. Father, you are so good. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for what's going on tonight, Lord. That the hearts are opening. That the minds are being set free. Addictions being broke off in the name of Jesus. You are so good, Jesus. We love you so much. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask you to just fill everyone up right now that they would receive the fruits of the Spirit out of Galatians 5.22. That they would be full to the brim. And then they would feel free to go and give it away. And then come back again and get filled up again. And to give away again. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. I thank you for what is happening here tonight. But we ask for more. You said there's more, so we ask for more. You said what we ask for, we will receive. And we're asking for you, Lord. You said ask, seek, and knock. We're asking tonight. We're asking for you. We're seeking. We're seeking for you tonight, Lord. We're knocking on your door. The door of the Holy Spirit the door of the fruits of the Spirit, the door of love. 
Some of you in here need to be set free from self-hate. Some of you here need to be set free from people that have harmed you, that have done wrong to you, that have done things to you that was not right. And I just ask tonight in the name of Jesus that you would set them free, that you would ask for freedom, that you would ask for him, and then freely receive what he has for you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. If you had accepted, if you have accepted the deal that was set before you from the Father, from his son to the cross. Just pray freedom over everyone here. I pray peace over everyone. Joy. Uncontrollable joy. There's nothing wrong with having joy. There's lots of storms in here tonight. I'm in a storm myself in my own life. But I still have joy. I still have self-control. I still have love. Hey, I still have peace. And my daughter is one of them that's out on the streets holding a sign. Forgive us, Lord, for the things that we uh, have not turned over to you. Help us to turn everything over to you, no matter how big or how small. Amen. Amen. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. It was a was an honor. I want to encourage you to not leave the place where you're at. To keep receiving keep receiving and if you need prayer do not leave this house do not leave this church without grabbing a pastor or staff member and getting prayer we will stay as long as we need to tonight thanks for watching the father's house orville youtube channel but don't stop there We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today and we hope to see you again soon.